All right, step number one, select your default cube, press X, delete, press numpad seven to be in top orthographic view, press shift A, mesh, and we're gonna use the plane, and then press numpad one to be in front orthographic view, and press R to rotate X on the X axis, nine zero, 90 degrees. Then press G to grab this Z on the Z axis and press one. There you go, we've got this over here. Now we can tab, edit mode, right click, subdivide, and we're gonna choose five subdivisions. Perfect. Now we're gonna press three to choose face select. Click off this object so we can see everything. And then we're gonna hold in shift and just select these specific faces here for our braids. Once you've done that, you're gonna press control I to invert and then press X to delete those faces. So we only left with this. And now we have to create three edges. So we're gonna press two to choose edge select. And we're gonna start off at this edge here, hold in shift. Deselect everything, then hold and shift, and just follow the path. Only turn when you have no other option to do so. So that's the first collection. We press P, separate the selection. And now we're going to do the next section, which is um, over here. Once again, hold and shift, and just make sure everything does get selected. And now we press P again, separate that selection, and then we do the final one, which is, yeah, hold in shift. And we make our way down the path. There we go. P, separate selection. And just like that, press tab, go into object mode, select the main plane, press X, delete. Now we only left with this. If you did it correct, it will look like this. And if you select any of these individual pieces, it looks like that, which is perfect. I'm very happy with this so far. Next thing we want to do is most likely go to our scene selection. Okay, it's not our scene. Object data properties, relationship. You want to go to your, what's it called? Your scene properties and units. Make sure you're on the metric system. And I'm going to press three first i'm going to select a group so let's use this this top one here press three to be in right orthographic now you want to zoom in a bit so you're nice and close and let me get my ruler out here i'm using measure it it's a free add-on you've got to edit preferences measure it that's what i've turned on to have this option appear, and I just want to confirm that I'm looking at the right measurement. Oh, that's not it, it's this, sorry. <laughs> Select that, and then just... Well, everything is in meters, so that's no good. Well, that's no good, let's undo that and just carry on. Haven't got time to waste. So I'm gonna press zoom in quite a bit and then I'm gonna press G to grab this, Y to lock it to the Y axis, put it in center there, holding control to make it go three spaces this way. And then I'm gonna do the same with this next bit. Let's take a look. This outer bit here, which is the outer one, and pad three, we have to do the same thing, yeah? G, control, two, three, click. Now they're equally apart, which is perfect. Now the next thing we wanna do is press one to choose, well press, make sure you select all these objects, right click and join. Then press tab, go into edit mode, and then press one to choose vertex select. And we're gonna choose all these verts along this path here. Hold in control and select them. With them selected, press three. Now, you don't wanna zoom in too much because you wanna work with the tens instead of the individuals. So these would be the individuals. Zooming out to them, at, there we go, now it's clear. Now I'm gonna press G, Y. Before I do this, let me just zoom in. Okay, it is on that side. Okay, cool. So zoom out there. G, Y, holding control. 
one, two, three, click. I'm gonna do the same with the other side. I'm gonna select this, hold and shift, select all of this. And with all of that selected, press three again, and press G, Y, control, Cool, that looks like it's the same distance apart. Now, if we did this right, it should work. Tab, object mode. Okay, yeah, so at a certain angle, we can see the bread effect, which is a really positive sign. All right, so now we can just go to use our modifiers. Add modifier, and we're gonna use a subdivision surface modifier to make this look pretty. I'm quite happy with that. That's looking pretty smooth, if you ask me for a braid. And then we want to apply this. And then we want to write, well, then we want to click on object, convert to curve. Now that this is a curve, it's got a symbol, it's no longer a mesh. We're going to press, sh uh, let me press numpad one, go top view. We're going to press shift A, curve, circle. And then we're going to select this over here, which we're going to rename our braid because it's pretty much done. We're going to go to our object data properties our geometry, our object, and we're going to use the Bezier curve. It's going to look, look a bit wonky, but when you select the Bezier curve over here, we can press S, and we can pull this in until it looks correct. And if you want to, we can also just full caps, which might also make it look a little bit better. So you can decide on the thickness that you like. I'm going to go with something like that looks pretty good to me all right and of course you can just select this right click shade smooth and we've got this beautiful braid and obviously now that you've got this beautiful braid you can press you can convert this into a mesh but let's press numpad 7 shift a and we're going to use a bezier curve in this example press s20 i guess make it nice and big Perhaps S20 is a bit much, S0.5. Let's make it S10. There we go. And with that done, next thing we want to do is select this braid, click Object, Convert to Mesh. And perhaps you want to make this look even smoother. You can just add another subdivision surface modifier to give it that extra level of smoothness. And I'm quite happy with that. There's a few more things we can do here. Like number one, we'll select this and we will right click set origin to geometry. And then we can rotate this to roughly 45 degrees and it's perfectly straight. Now, if the holes didn't plug in, go to edit mode, press two, hold in alt and you just, if you do it, hold on, deselect, hold in alt and then press F to fill. And you can select all these holes. There's only six of them. F to fill. They were supposed to fill when I clicked on the caps thing, but for whatever reason it didn't. Hold in Alt, fill. And we'll do the same to the top. And you only convert this to a mesh when you're done playing with the design if you're happy with it. Otherwise, you'd leave it as a curve. Let's do it to this side as well. Hold F. There you go, we got this beautiful braid. Tab, object mode. I'm quite happy with this result. Now we wanna make it go across a curve. So let's get to that. My computer just crashed and I had to start over. So just don't forget to save your file, just a pro tip. Anyway, so select this, choose a curve modifier and once you've chosen a curve modifier change this to the z-axis and make this the bezier curve also you can select your bezier circle we're done with it you can press x delete and numpad 7 and there we have it now all we need to do the last step is to add a array modifier but don't forget to select your braid Control a and apply all also oh, this won't work properly and put your array above your curve modifier and make sure that the offset on the x-axis is zero. 
But on the z-axis is, let's make it one initially just to see how it looks. All right, now we have to zoom in and try and get this right. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. Let's try 0 0.75. So what I did was I just uh, plugged the holes and made it 0 0.75 and clicked on merge at 0 0.05, first and last ticked. And then you can just increase your count to how long you want it. Now, these braids aren't perfect. For whatever reason, I am struggling a little bit. Heaven knows why. You can actually up the count now to whatever number you like. So if you want it to be on 10, there you have it. But these braids could work well on you know a head of hair still. So we've got our subdivision surface modifier here, set to 1. Um, we've got our array modifier, 0 0.75, ticked for merge, ticked for relative offset, and first and last caps, all done. Then we've got our curve, z-axis on the bezier curve, and we deleted our circle curve. And just like that, we've created a very interesting braid. And obviously, you can move this around, press tab, go into edit mode. You can actually press tab, go into object mode, pardon me. You can select your bezier curve, tab, edit mode. And you can select all the parts, right click, subdivide. And you can pull things around if you wanted to to create any style. So now you can actually use this braid in any model that you like. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.